Merry Christmas, baby. Rain is coming out to play. Santa Claus is packing the presents, making sure you've been behaving okay. Merry Christmas, honey. Off his hat, putting on the show for everybody to give them a smile that lasts another year. There's something that happens to now. What is this that I can see on the mud just down here? decorative it looks like part of something maybe some kind of uh, I don't know brooch part of a cat badge it looks like some thistles there doesn't it so it could be part of a piece of jewelry maybe that's really quaint isn't it a little mystery I've seen a bottle stopper, it's just down there, right in the centre of the screen. Let's go and investigate. Look, there it is, just there. Ooh. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that is really nice. You know what that means? It means the obligatory bottle stopper in the sun shot. And we have to do it before the sun goes down. Isn't that pretty? Okay, look what I have seen just down here. Just making an appearance from the mud. Just look at that. It looks to be a complete 19th century pipe and I can see that there is definitely a maker on there. Oh, let's savour this moment for a minute. Let's go and have a look from the other side and see if we can make out what it says. Yeah, it's definitely in one piece because look, it's got the, the complete end there, that little nipple bit on the end. Let's take it out. Oh, look at that. It's really beautiful. Right, let's go and rinse it off. What a beautiful treat. Oh, it just never fails to amaze me that you can still find these in one piece when so many people have been walking on this mud over the last century and a half. And they just seem so delicate, but it's still in one piece. And it's just incredible, really. It just goes to show that they get embedded in the mud and then it's a perfect little home for them whilst they're hibernating over the decades and the centuries. So what does that say? Okay, that says Burns Cutty. And we might have a maker on there. could just say Burns Cutty on that side as well. We'll check it out when I get home, but isn't that just lovely? And that shiny black will turn to that ivory colour in no time at all. 
Welcome to the world, welcome to the 21st century. Little pipe. Okay, now I've just seen something really curious and potentially quite exciting just down here. The light is fading, so you might not see it too well, but it's just here and it looks like a little pair of legs and presumably a body. So let's do a little body extraction and see what comes out. Look, it's a tiny person. It's a tiny person. Wow, let's give it a wash. It, it, I don't know why, but it doesn't look like a doll. It looks like a, like a mini adult, but maybe when I've got the mud off, we'll see a little bit better. Maybe it's the Virgin Mary. Gosh, I don't know. It's a lady, isn't it? And she, I don't know, she appears to be touching her stomach. Um, she almost appears to be hitching up her skirt. Wow, I've never seen anything like this before. I have never seen anything like this before. I wonder what it's made of. Very curious woman hitching up skirts, touching stomach. Probably not the Virgin Mary. But this is very intriguing. What have we got here? Nice piece of transfer wear. Victorian transfer wear. Oh, that's pretty, isn't it? Looks like a stag there. Well, it's getting pretty dark, so I'm going to head home now. There's another half an hour till low tide, but it's actually really sludgy for some reason, and so I can't see that much anyway. And I'm also really excited to go and have a closer look at that little figurine. Good morning everyone, as you can see I'm here by the River Thames but I wanted to show you the beautiful sight that we woke up to this morning. Come and take a look with me. I'm here at the old Royal Naval College and look at this beautiful sight behind me right up through Greenwich Park. Isn't it wonderful? We've got snow! We hardly ever get snow so this is a real event. So I'm going to walk along the Thames path for a bit and go and see what I can find at low tide but I wanted to come this way so I could show you how lovely it's all looking. Snow makes things look so pretty doesn't it?
I've just seen a couple of things over here. Now I wonder if you can see them. The first one is just down here. Look, it could possibly be a bag seal. Yeah, that's what it is. And it does have a letter on there. It looks like an E or something. Or a B. B for bag. <laughs> I don't know. We'll examine it a little closer later on. But I'm particularly excited about what's over there. Look. Now, can you see what I'm looking at? That looks like a rather beautiful lead toy, doesn't it? Oh, I can see the heads missing. That is beautiful. Look, looks like a soldier on a horse. And what's great is that it still has some of the paint. Hopefully I'll be able to bend that little horsey head to get it straighter. He's also lost the bottom of his limbs. They don't fare too well in the Thames, these toys, but this one's in pretty good condition. At least you can see what it is. I wonder what child lost this or who played with it many, many years ago. Just look at all these rivets down here. There's loads of them. They are very good at masquerading as coins. I've been fooled many a time. But I have just seen a coin in amongst this lot. I wonder if you can see it. It's actually just down here. It's there. Can you see it? in the middle of the screen. Let's have a look and see what it is. There we are, that looks like a farthing. Maybe a George the Fifth or a George the Sixth. I can't see the date at the moment. Now what's this? This looks like a key. The crusty key. I should be able to clean that up though. I love these keys. It's so nice to see the transformation when you clean them up. I want to show you something I just pulled out of the mud. It's just here. Look, you can see the, the imprint it's left in the mud after being there for so long. I have no idea what it is, whether it's something industrial or whether it's something a little more interesting. Of course, I'm rather hoping it's a beautiful brooch or something, but I'm not sure. I'm not convinced. Let's give it a little wash. Could it be something gold? And very, very spectacular. Mm, what is that? What's it? How interesting. Okay, well, I'm going to pop it in my bag and wash it when I get home and we can see if we can find out what it is. You might be able to help me. 
Is it a Celtic brooch or is it an old washer? I do love a good mystery find. What are those crows feasting on over there? Merry Christmas, baby. The snow is laying two feet deep. Now wish upon a falling star so all your secret dreams can come true. There's something that happens when sleigh bells are ringing When December is when the children are singing, yeah It's Merry Christmas, baby Ooh. Hi everyone, thank you very much for watching and I hope that whatever you're having for your dinner all your lunch today is a lot nicer than whatever those crows and that seagull were tucking into. I didn't go too close because I didn't really want to see. I could see a lot of feathers flying around and so I thought no 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 I'll let them get on with their Christmas lunch and I'll just be getting on with my mudlarking. And as much as I enjoy a little bit of lobster from time to time I wasn't tempted to start chewing on this little fella who was sitting there on the foreshore on that snowy cold cold morning he now joins the thames tideline art orphanage and all the other little plastic marine creatures that i've collected over the years and anyway so happy christmas to you all it is christmas day when this video is being released and so those of you who are watching it on christmas day i'd like to wish you an absolutely beautiful christmas whether or not you celebrate christmas and I hope that you're doing something fun today, that you're eating some nice food, that you're maybe spending time with friends and family. Um, and if you're not, maybe you're just sitting down and enjoying watching a bit of TV, reading a book, going for a nice walk. But whatever you're doing, wherever you are, I hope that your day is going to be a really excellent one. So thank you very much for watching and joining me on that little foreshore foray little exploration and now I'm going to just share with you some of those finds and perhaps you're going to be able to help me find out something more about them. I do have a firm favourite from those two outings and perhaps you'll be able to guess what it is. It is in my opinion the the most intriguing one. This strange little figurine here. At first I thought that she was a frozen Charlotte, like a little doll, which would have been quite appropriate for the, the frozen day. Um, but she isn't. She is something a little bit more. She appears to be holding up her skirt, touching her belly. Is she pregnant? Um, I don't know. She's also exposing the upper half of her body. So is she something erotic was she something that a sailor might have popped in his pocket when he was away at sea is it a fertility symbol um, she's made of pipe clay but i don't think that she was part of a pipe if you look at her back here it sort of looks as if she was maybe embedded into something maybe some wood um it has been suggested that she could be a pipe tamper, but I think she's a bit too small for that. She's only got tiny little feet, so they're not really going to do a great job of trampling down the tobacco in somebody's pipe unless it was done with her head. So I don't know. I'm not quite sure. I have shown it to the Fines Liaison Officer at the Museum of London, and he is probably going to record her, I believe, and he thinks that she could date to the late 18th to the early 19th century. So if you've got any ideas about what her purpose was, what she was for, then please do let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear from you. But I absolutely love her. Every now and again, you find something eroding out of the mud and it sort of fills you with joy. And this little find certainly filled me with a lot of joy. Secondly, the other mystery find, which you saw there at the end of the video, is this. 
It looks like a sort of triangular small bicycle wheel, but when I cleaned the mud off, I found some lovely glittery stones all the way round the edge. So it's definitely something decorative, but what? Um, was there a stone in the middle? The curious thing about it is that on the back, there is this little thing here, which is obviously squashed. It was probably sticking out at some point in its life. And so what was it? The lid to something? Is it a buckle? Um, was it worn? I don't know. It doesn't look like it was a brooch, but I don't know, it could be. Does anybody out there have any ideas and suggestions as to what this could be? I think it's made of copper alloy. It's definitely not gold or, or precious metal. Again, a little mystery. The Thames has thrown out a few Christmas mysteries and I love a good mystery. And it's particularly great because I have such a good community out there. There's always somebody or some people who can offer up some really good suggestions as to the um, IDs on these finds. So please let me know. Second mystery. Um, this little object here, very quaint. I gave it a little polish. It's, it's a couple of thistles. It could maybe have been a little pin. There does seem to be something on the back there which could indicate that it was once uh, a little tiny brooch or a pin. Or could it have been part of a cat badge? I'm not sure. It's such a lot of fun finding these objects and trying to work out what they were in their former life when they were worn, displayed with great pride before somehow or other they ended up in the river. And thank goodness they were because then, you know, it's such a surprise to come along and unwrap these muddy presents, muddy Christmas presents. They are the best presents of all, including this lovely lead horse here. And it's funny to think that maybe in a Christmas house over a century ago, some child may have unwrapped this lead horse and been extremely excited and gone off to play with it. Hopefully not munching into it because let's face it, we wouldn't give our children lead toys under the Christmas tree now. I know that, especially in the case of my little grandson, uh, Joey Jet, um, this would go straight in his mouth lead poisoning all round. Um, it wouldn't be a Christmas outing, of course, if there wasn't a clay pipe involved. And this is a lovely mid 19th century pipe, which is completely in one piece. It has burns cutty along the side on both sides. And I wonder who once stood there looking out over the river, puffing on his clay pipe, and then who dropped it only for me to come along and find it over a century later. Incredible, isn't it? Really. The Thames, it looks after all these precious little gifts and then gradually reveals them to everybody. It's really just so wonderful. It's not surprising really that so many people love mudlarking. It just gets your imagination going. It's history that you can hold in the palm of your hand. So that's it for the finds and what a great bunch of finds there were. It's going to be hard to, to better them really for next year because this year I have been so fortunate and found some truly wonderful um, pieces of history from the river. So moving on from the finds, I wanted to share with you a little Christmas project which I did last week. I was going to do it for my birthday but didn't get around to it so I thought I'd do it for Christmas instead and it involves 20 of these bottles which I placed in London. They are recyclable bottles which I bought. These are old drinking bottles that can be used uh, time and time again and so let me share with you now what I did with them. I'm here today in London on a very, very cold day with 20 messages in bottles, but they are no ordinary messages in bottles. They are with a view to spreading some Christmas kindness and I'm going to be placing them 
in various places around London. And inside is a little note and a five pound note, but there's a catch because whoever finds them, the five pound note is not for them. It's to spread some Christmas kindness. So I've left a note with instructions on how they can do this. And I've asked them to send me a little video letting me know what yeah. they've done with the five pounds. Maybe buying something for a homeless person, buying a present for a lonely neighbor, helping somebody out. And hopefully then they'll send me the video clip. And if all goes well, in January, I'll be able to share those clips with you. Let's see what happens. Maybe no one will find them. Maybe no one will actually spend the five pounds on somebody else. But I'm hoping that this is going to spread a little bit of Christmas kindness. So come with me and let's go and place these special messages in bottles in London. The first one, ready? From the moment we held on Two things we cannot see I would cross the sky forever It's only just begun I know you will agree Things to make us all feel better What I may have What I may own I give it all Like a desert in the sun are now gone, placed in various places around London. So all that remains to see is, has some Christmas kindness been shared? And indeed, indeed, what will happen with those bottles? What's going to happen with them? Will anybody find them? Will they follow the instructions in the message? Will they show some Christmas kindness or not? Well, I hope that you can contain your patience 
and come with me in another three or four weeks time and see the results of this Christmas kindness social experiment. It will be very interesting to see what happens. And if you're watching this video and you found one of those bottles, then please do get in touch. Just send me a little message or a photograph or a little video clip telling me what you did with your five pound note that you found in the message in a bottle. And as for this one, well, now that I've shown it to you, I shall go out this afternoon and place it somewhere and hope that whoever finds it will send me a video to include on the results. I'm very excited, very excited, but I have to keep reminding myself that with these things, you have to just let go of the outcome. It was a very fun afternoon and I do hope that some Christmas joy and love was spread around um, after the bottles were found. So again, I would just love to wish you all a very happy Christmas and a lovely day, a lovely week and a lovely end of the year. It's nearly 2023, goodness me, hasn't this year flown by? I honestly can't believe how quickly it's gone. I'd like to say a huge thank you to you all for watching my videos. You are an amazing community and um, so kind. I'm very fortunate there aren't too many trolls out there. On the subject of that though, hang on a moment, that just reminded me of something. On the subject of that, unfortunately there are fraudsters and trolls out there, these very, very unpleasant um, specimens of people that do sometimes take advantage of kind people such as yourselves. And I know that some of you have been unfortunately taken in with this. There have been people, not just on my YouTube channel, but on other YouTube channels who take advantage, especially if you're, there's a giveaway involved, who start to reply to comments saying that you have won something and to contact, well, me, they say it's me, they're pretending to be me, to contact me through um, a WhatsApp or a different um, app, Telegram, I think, and, and then asking for money, saying that you've won something and that they want money for it to be sent. I just want to let you know, I would never do anything like that. I certainly wouldn't reply to comments asking you to contact me by WhatsApp, or I would never ever ask anybody for money to send any kind of prize or anything. So please, please be vigilant. Don't let these people take you in, especially at this time of year. They're, they're out there trying to um, really make people miserable and steal their money. So do not, do not pay attention to them. And if you see these comments, report them or let me know so that I can delete them and I can report them. Anyway, again, thank you so much for being such a great audience. Thank you also for all the donations which I have received via Ko-fi and via Super Thanks. I really, really appreciate them. And most of all, I just appreciate you all being you. So thank you everyone. Go on and have a brilliant day. And I'm looking forward to seeing you again very, very soon. And it will be in the new year, in 2023. I'll see you there. Thank you, bye-bye. That time of year has come around again Good on some but hard on others Be kind and take care of each other Not everyone has got a friend tonight
to say happy Christmas. Did you catch that little face there? That little Christmassy squirrel face? Oh, it's gone up there now on the scaffolding, which is soon coming down, so you won't be able to go up there anymore. I think that this is a message to say that she wants to go and meet on the windowsill of Christmas Delights for a Christmas peanut. I'd better go and do her bidding. I can show you the Christmas tree on the way. And yes, look, there she is. There she is. Come on then. Would you like a Christmas nut? You're gonna say happy Christmas to everybody. You're gonna say happy Christmas to everyone. Come on then, here's well. Do you want another one? Another one, there you go. There we are. You're gonna say happy Christmas to everyone before you rush off. <laughs> Um, I, I'm sure she would have, but I think she's very hungry. Happy Christmas everyone from Squirrel. Have a beautiful, beautiful day. <laughs> 